Hello, this is Daniel Mart, and today I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna be doing another review, and this time a review. This time I'm gonna be doing a review for me and Earl and the Dying Girl. Um, so yeah, I th honestly, I thought it was called Me Earl and the Dying Girl, but apparently it's called Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. Um, so yeah, whatever. Um, so yeah, this movie stars this movie stars Thomas Mann, um, R. J. Siler or Kyler. Olivia Cook, Nick Offerman, Coney Britton, Molly Shannon, John John Shane Punisher Burnthal, basically. Um fuck, that guy's been like in ton of stuff late, lately. Um John Burnthal. Um Catherine C. Hughes. And yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, quick thing on John Burnthal. He's been in a ton of shit. Um literally with this movie I realized how much of this shit I've seen past The Walking Dead. Um, yeah. After The Walking Dead, he's on Fury. He was in Wolf of Wall Street. Now he's in this. And apparently he's going to come out with another movie that also looks pretty interesting called We Are Friends. Um, I believe that's the name of the title of the movie. So, yeah. Be um, whatever. Before I go off topic, 10 seconds spoiler warning as usual. For those who have yet to, to actually watch the movie and haven't already. Stop the video, go check it out, and come back and watch the rest of this review. 10 seconds spoiler warning as usual, starting now. Okay, so 10 seconds are up. So for those who have yet to actually watch um, the review and haven't already, stop the video. Yeah, for those who have yet to actually watch the review and haven't already and are still watching this video, uh, please don't comment down below or be or be messaging me. That I never give you a fair warning, because as usual, fair warning, because as usual, I did. So yeah, so me and Earl and the dying girl, as usual, quick synopsis, likes and dislikes, and then the rate. So basically, in this in this movie, you have this um you have this kid um these two kids um one of them is called Earl and I forgot the other kid's name right now um Greg and basically there are these two like kind of outcast i guess you could say um in their school um the main character he says they're not they're not complete outcast um he's one of those people who can go from group to group and ba he's basically invisible but at the same time visible that's basically how he describes it and it's really interesting how he describes it and i know it sounds weird it's basically like he's one of those people he, um that he talks to everybody within the school system like within every single group you know jocks beauty queens um goths um smoke you know Smokers, alcoholics, um, pot dealers, whatever, um, the the Jewish community, um, the LGBT, whatever. Like he's able to transgress, I guess it's the proper word, um, through all these groups. And basically, that's actually a pretty huge part. Um, and he says his group, he 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 basically states that he has no group. Though, however, if I were to put him in a group, I put him under the film geek group, because he because he and Earl both make films. Like they make parody films if you know what i mean like or spoof films he did one of clockwork orange which looked pretty funny so yeah so one day um his mom forces him to go to this girl's Ra this girl rachel's house who ha just happens to have leukemia with you know cancer and it's very bad obviously because it's leukemia and you know at first he really doesn't want to go because he doesn't really know the girl and the last thing he ever said to her before before they actually became friends was maybe one of the most dick things he could have said. He didn't know he didn't know at the time, but it was a pretty dick move. Um, after he realized what was happening, and so whatever, he goes over to his house, and slowly after time they become friends. Um, and it shows basically the struggles. Um, the basically the struggles because he he's really. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him misanthrope, but he he basically doesn't like associating himself with the word friends. Um, he doesn't really want to have enemies. He's just trying to survive in school, which is you know pretty logical. Everybody wants to survive in high school and college, um, as well, because he says you know this same shit's gonna happen all over again in college, just on a bigger scale. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting to see this kid's train of thoughts. Um, so it's basically him trying to deal with his friend, who's more chill, he's more relaxed, he's like, who gives a shit? Um, and this dying girl, you know, and the dying girl, basically, hence the title, um, Rachel, who, with leukemia, and basically he's trying to balance his life with that, and with all within this one year, because it's his sen senior year, he goes from being a kind of someone nobody, if that makes sense, to 
being a somebody basically um again he's trying to make um these films for this girl for the dying girl um he ends up um kind of uh making friends with one of the hottest girls in school um so there's that and he starts making bullies and stuff and he gets into his first fight so you know it is a pretty good story and i'm pretty sure i'm not doing justice and actually describing this movie because i'm i can tell right off i'm not really describing this movie in in the best way possible and to some extent um yeah but i will say it's a fantastic movie oh my gosh um yeah it definitely is one of the best movies i've seen this year thus far um it, I do like how they kind of make fun of the whole romantic comedy stuff. Like, like it's kind of, it is a bit meta in that aspect that, you know, they make fun of the whole cliches that they have in romantic uh, movies. You know, if this, you know, they say if this is a movie, we'd be having sex by now. But this isn't a movie. This is real life. So now we're just here staring at a TV. Um, so it's pretty cool in that aspect, you know, kind of them making fun of the cliches. Um, us, again, going back to John Berthold, oh, my God. He was a teacher in this film, and he's maybe one of the chillest teachers I've seen in any movie. Um, like. I'd love to have him as a teacher. Um, even if he wasn't an actor, I would love to have, see him, um, have him as a teacher. At least a character as a teacher. Because he's this guy with like this cool-ass beard. He has tattoos from his neck to his arms. And he's like a history teacher. And, he, and but he's like one of those chill teachers who also likes movies. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and he gives some pretty good advice um, throughout the movie um, in regards to, to the dying girl. Um, so it was a pretty good movie. Again, it's... Um, it's, again, I do like how they kind of make fun of the cliches you see in romance, r romance movies and romantic comedies. That was pretty funny, which, but to some extent, they do have the cliches too, like a few cliches. You see them a little bit more relevant. Um, you see them, you see the cliches a bit more towards like the latter half of the movie, so whatever. But so it was pretty funny how they kind of made fun of those cliches. Um, also this kid, he's really big into other films, film media. He makes spoof, him and Earl make um, spoof films of these movies, such as Clockwork Orange, um, for example. And um, they had like this real artsy style. And this whole movie is an artsy movie. It's an independent film. It's a smart film. And it is a very artsy movie. And you get that right off the bat. Um... If anything, if one complaint I have for this movie, it just kind of starts, in my opinion, with like, out any, it just starts, if you know what I mean, um, I don't, I don't know how to describe, describe it, but it just kind of starts, um, like you're just waiting for this movie to, you know, begin, and, you know, all of a sudden it just starts, and I, I know that's kind of a weird thing to say, but it's like an abrupt start, I don't know if that makes sense, and like the first 10 minutes I was trying to get into it. it was still pretty good the first 10 minutes were still pretty good but again it just kind of comes out of nowhere and just starts out it's a pretty weird complaint I know but if you're in the movie if you're you know if you're watching the movie you'd understand what I mean but still regardless it's just a small bullshit nitpick I have um overall it's one of the best films I've seen this year thus far yeah and two of the best films I've seen this year thus far I happen to have watched them this weekend me me and Earl and the dying girl and then the other film I saw was Dope, which I will review. Two of the best films I've seen this weekend, this year. Um, so again, it's a pretty bullshit complaint. It just kind of starts, but whatever. Overall, I had, the acting's pretty good. Um, the acting's pretty good. Uh, you know, everybody here does their best. Um, Nick Offerman, he's a really weird guy in this movie. He's Greg's dad, the main character's dad. And he's just petting this cat like half the time, talking about these exotic foods, and it's just very funny. Um, the main the main kid, Thomas Mann, really great actor in my opinion. Um, R.J. Um, Kyler Siler, however you pronounce his name, last name. He's a, he was pretty good in the cast as well. Olivia Cook, um, she's been around. She's pretty good as well. Um, so yeah, the writing in this movie again, aside from the from it being kind of meta, making fun of the cliches. The other parts of the writing, was, overall, it's a pretty good movie. It's a pretty good um, romance story. I mean, kind of. Um, not exactly romance, but I guess you could say it's a romance. It's a pretty good romance story. Um, definitely better than Twilight. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I do like how they kind of um, show this kid's high school life as a whole, too. Also, I'm trying to get into college. That's really good, realistic. Um, it is very realistic. From what I've seen, I haven't experienced it yet because I'm, I'm going to junior year, 11th grade. But I'm pretty sure once I'm in 12th grade, I'm going to understand those feelings a bit more. Or at least the high school feelings of me trying to get into college. Um, overall, though, fantastic movie in my opinion. One of the best movies we I've seen this year thus far. One of the best movies, of, yeah, again, the year, um, this year thus far. Um, yeah, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, and 6 being decent. 
I'd give it a 9 out of 10. It's a fantastic uh, movie. Again, just some bullshit um, complaints. Nitpicks by... I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, it was sad also at the ending, too. She she dies, so there's that. Um, great film, in my opinion. Fantastic film. Um, really good independent film, smaller film. It was in Sundance, I believe, or Connors. Connors, Sundance, I believe. Um, yeah, definitely do check it out if you have an opportunity. It is um, definitely one of the best movies um, of this year. So, yeah. Um... Next up, I will be reviewing Dope in another video, so do stay tuned for that. And aside from that, that's basically it for now. Um, subscribe, like the video, share on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, or whatever you guys prefer. Um, subscribe, I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, and comic book reviews. Comment down below your thoughts on the movie, like the video. And aside from that, that's basically it for now. This is Daniel Mart, signing off.